Wolami, Walama Bami, Giara Karina Dani, Gu Bangalaku Wagu Nura Yura, Nura Nyana Ja Australia Wanabe. Hello, wherever you have come from, my name is Karina. I pay respects to all First Nations people, past, present, and those who will arrive in the future across Australia. I am a Kanamagal Kamaregal Daro Jin woman, Kame Gwegal from Daro Nura as well. I also belong to Te Atehanu Apaparangi Te Iwi on my mother's side. English is my first language learned, and Daro, Daro, and Te Reo are the second languages I continue to learn. I've lived back and forth between Aotearoa and Australia, and my Daro and Daro grandparents migrated to New Zealand in 1958 when my dad was five years old. I feel inspired yet frustrated at times when learning my languages. I know language defines me and is the driving force of my cultural practices and it gives me purpose, a yearning for continuing in the revitalization process, in particular for Dharug and Dharug languages. The most important aspect for me though is being productive in the language and what I mean by that is when we're conversing and uh, seeing the language in mother, you know, our landscape all over Nura country. I believe that language ignites our culture and in its essence drives language. And I know that language needs and should and can and will be the narrative of our everyday life and the way we communicate with each other. So learning, walking, working in the two worlds that we do live in. The opportunity to participate in the MILE, uh, Masters of Indigenous Languages Education, really validated my thinking and embedded more so the drive to advocate for Daru and Daru Dalang, in fact, all Indigenous languages. I still have my owls on, but I feel more confident when I speak even writing it or reading the language now. Uh, and, you know, with that said, um, it has began another journey for me um, in wanting to learn more about linguistics. I'm very honoured and privileged that I live and work on country with my mujin and family who carry this responsibility of language learning. And of course, it does have its challenges, especially when we have um, other mob living on our country who want to learn our language as well as their own, which is amazing. But, you know, for us, um, there's very few of us to teach and provide and make the resources. So a lot of our language work has been personally financed in the pursuit to, to share the language and teach um, and from our community. I'd also like to briefly touch base on Aboriginal English because I was exposed to it, um, but I didn't know the term really Aboriginal English until later in life and in my teaching career. So, you know, growing up, this particular dialect had a positive and negati uh, negative connotation. And, but I do appreciate and understand the sensitivity around Aboriginal English and the different ways of speaking, honouring and valuing this dialect because it's another layer of defining who we are and the identity and belonging of, you know, our mob. And code switching is really what I found I was um, most exposed to. And I think this high level of processing to code switches also, um, and a, you know, it, it is, it highlights actually how amazing and deadly we have evolved. And, you know, going on to just standard Australian English and talking about that, uh, you know, it, it, as I mentioned, it is my first language that I was exposed to and it has been very useful when comprehending the world that I we live in and having English as my first language still has its challenges but I am very thankful that this assisted me in my teaching and learning career. 
I've had first language acquisition speakers say to me that they wish they had had English as their first language, but I say, no, no, no. Uh, you're very lucky to have learnt your native tongue first. I still consider first languages of all Indigenous peoples across the world to be the most precious to learn, and it takes significant time patience to grow, to learn, to create, and to make these resources for, you know, especially in the revitalization process. Uh, and, you know, so for living to grow, you know, in these two worlds and learn, it really has enriched my journey of language learning as I have been able to choose further study, uh, to not only learn about my Darug and Darug languages, but again, emphasizing that as Aboriginal people, you know, we are in um, the academic space now and we're researching, we're writing, we're informing and making decisions about our own languages. And in fact, you know, we're using dual language in our research. So I guess in closing, like for me, knowing that my ancestors were suppressed to speak their Dalang drives myself and my Mujin to continue to live by culture and ignite our language and to honour uphold their custodianship of, of, of Nura. And uh, yeah, Didri Gura Ngara Le, thank you for listening. <laughs>